Well, um, the economy only grew by 0.6% uh, 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 last year. The interesting thing is that the economy grew by 0.6%. The output gap got closed. And what that tells us is that the problems of this growth are thus structural in nature. And so you've got to raise the potential growth rate of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, economy. But even over the next two years of our forecast period, growth will only average just over 1%. Uh, and so clearly, the structural changes need to be effected to get the, this economy growing again. Inflation, uh, when we talk about some of the pricing pressures, uh, South Africa's inflation rate has been higher relative to developed, uh, the developed countries over the past 10 years, averaging about 5% for the, the decade of 2022. Headline inflation hit 5.3% last month. Does that mean you're getting closer back towards target? Well, our baseline scenario is that we will get to target in 2025 uh, in the third or quarter of 2025 we will reach 4.5 percent which is what we are aiming uh, for and we would like to see it sustained uh, for a period of time uh, to be convinced that the job on the inflation front uh, is done but at the moment the job on the inflation front is not yet done what does it mean in terms of interest rates where do you see them going then in the forecasting period well the important thing is to see where inflation is going uh, because we are not targeting interest rates, we are targeting inflation. And so we will be looking at what is happening to inflation. And if inflation returns to target and is sustained there, then they would be need to recalibrate, uh, to recalibrate policy. Uh, but that is not where we are at the moment. What's coming through loud and clear is that a lot of countries are not working out in, in isolated environments. There are a lot of outside factors, namely policy divergence. And we've just heard from the US Federal Reserve today that some of the hot data means that inflation is not coming down as much as the central bank would like. Mm -hmm. If there's policy divergence and the Fed is high for longer, how does that impact countries like yours? Well, if the Fed is um, high for longer, uh, bear in mind that actually many emerging markets, including my own, tightened rates long before the Fed started uh, tightening uh, a rate. And you have seen that uh, those countries, mainly in Latin America, that tightened policy early in 2022 have begun to uh, relax um, a policy as their disinflation process has been faster than what you had seen uh, uh, elsewhere uh, in the world. The Fed is the central bank of a, a major uh, uh, economy. And so what they do uh, does tell us what the prospects are for the US economy. And uh, as small open economies, we watch what the Fed is doing. We do not follow what the Fed uh, is doing. We watch what they are, they are doing because it has got implications for global financing uh, uh, conditions and it has got implications for realignment of exchange rates uh, globally. And you had called that um, a, a, a divergence, but the point of the matter is that uh, you would have seen that a lot of currencies uh, reprice uh, as uh, the markets try to factor in what the Fed is doing. What I think that what it does reflect though is the amount of uncertainty uh, in the market. I mean, that the markets will react because Inflation surprised by 0.1% just tells you how much uncertainty is out there.